multi-tenant for us means that we are managing multiple workloads on a single instance, or virtual machine or a physical machine. And security is actually, it's, it's an important aspect that's changed a little bit in multi-tenant environments because if you're running in a public cloud, you're actually, your virtual machine is running on the same physical hardware as other users, maybe your competitors, malicious users. And you need to be able to have really good assurance that your virtual machine and the processes running within that are controlled and they're protected from anyone else that might happen to be on the same physical hardware. So for us, uh, in a private data center, you didn't really have to worry about who else was running on the physical hardware. And you would tend to secure things by putting things you know, four levels from the light of day um, behind your DMZ. And you really didn't have to worry about the processes and the controls running on that specific box. So in a public cloud, you have to actually look at your your workloads that are running there and how can you secure everything, even down to the process level. And we actually use SE Linux for this because it provides great process control. We can actually build a policy of exactly what is that process supposed to be able to do. And even under an exploit, we can control the process to the same behaviors that it was meant to perform. So it gives us a great level of assurance that the things that we're running even if they're in a multi-tenant environment, and even if we did have to deal with a security exploit, the running processes are still very controlled to their intended behavior. In Unix, you have traditional file-based permissions and ACLs where you can say who can read something, who can write something, who can execute something. And usually you have owners on that, and once something is actually running, it just follows those same base permission levels. And the other thing in the Unix world was you sort of had root, which could do anything, and then you had everybody else that could do some reduced level of privileges. SE Linux actually adds another dimension to that, where once processes are actually running, you can control the running state, no matter who started that process, whether it was root or whether it was one of your unprivileged users, you can control exactly what system calls and operations that process can do. So if your Apache process should never be reading your password file, um, you can actually control that even if that Apache process was exploited, that it could never read that, that password file because that was never an instant intended. So OpenShift is Red Hat's platform as a service. We actually, we have a offering that's focused on applications and developers that we can run your code and your applications on an infrastructure as a service provider. We can basically manage all of the operational components and backups and updating and things that you would typically have to do in your own role, but you're focusing on development and we can offload all of that and do that for you. So that's what OpenShift is, and it brought some unique challenges of how we we're actually going to run in an extremely multi-tenant environment, where we had hundreds or thousands of users' applications. Some of them are guaranteed to be malicious, that are all going to run in the same box, and we want consistent performance. We want real security for each of those uh, in sandboxing, and we looked at what technologies we could utilize to do that. We first went to RHEL. We actually run all of our platforms on RHEL. And we focus on SE Linux for our core security layer. That's every process that each user runs. We actually establish SE Linux, custom SE Linux policy and sandboxes for each user. On top of that, we have to provide consistent resourcing for those users. So your application can't you know, be running blazing fast one day and then we happen to put some more users on the box and your performance, you know, falls apart. And so we wanted to be able to look at resource utilization of how can we control what each user can reasonably use and then what is the flexibility that we can provide if a box is underutilized, what will we let users spike up and utilize? And we, we use um, Linux control groups to be able to control the majority of that in terms of your CPU usage, your memory usage, what processes um, can you utilize, how many processes you can get, and things like your I.O. rates to be able to control a really consistent 
performance and expectations on what each application is going to be able to do. Efficiency was a big challenge for us with OpenShift because it's an environment that can scale really quickly. We can have a lot of users, a lot of demand that comes in, and you know, depending on what users do, we need to be able to react very quickly to be able to meet all the consistency requirements that we wanted to give to our users. So our ability to do that, we leveraged infrastructure as a service capabilities a lot. That provided um, us a mechanism to be able to spin up a new VM and to procure resources in a relatively quick manner. You know, within a minute, we can pull 100 or 1,000 machines or whatever we would need. But that said, our ability to actually update those machines and control them and monitor them and tell when they fail, it's very similar to your traditional data center challenge. And our efficiency of doing that and being able to move applications from machines that aren't performing well to others was core, um, core to us being able to provide a good product. So for that, we need to standardize on what was our messaging layer and platform going to be because we had to communicate to all these machines. We have to be able to watch them and monitor them, give them instructions, and be able to control those. And our core messaging technology was very important for us there to make sure we could trust it. We would know what that was. And we wanted it on an open standard. So we actually standardized on AMQP for the backbone of all of our orchestration um, operations and, and uh, processes. OpenShift is a great reference architecture on our own products. We use even coming from an IT background. We use more bells and whistles in RHEL and in our middleware products such as JBoss and then our products like Merge and Messaging then um, even any of the offerings that we use internally which we are a, a heavy consumer of our own products there. So OpenShift has been, it's a great way for us to showcase some of the things that it's more experimental, it's on the bleeding edge of what our products can do but we can actually show how well they do that in a public, open to anybody um, environment with actually really high demands. So we're definitely not just taking stock products and doing things that um, anyone else has done. In fact, when we look at our security layer, we have changed our company's SE Linux policies. We make changes that Dan Walsh and team actually drive back into Fedora and back into RHEL. So we have a pretty good understanding that we're we're blazing a new trail here because we're trying to do things that have never been hit by anybody else yet. Uh, one of the neatest things to me is our first time we sat down with our performance group and we said, hey guys, we're going to use SE Linux custom policies. Everything's going to be controlled in enforcing mode. We're going to um, use Linux control groups and not one or two of them, but we're going to have one for every user that's on the machine. We're going to use PAM limits and you know, basically every feature in RHEL. Uh, they were a little bit concerned of what actually happens when we turn all of this on because we tend to look at things at various customer use cases and this was not a use case that people tend to do. And it's been it's sort of been shockingly successful to all of us from the low level performance and overhead measures to how well each of those components have worked together um, when we bring it all together.